Welcome to Fan Counters. My name's Nick. And I'm Elizabeth. And you can find us on social media. We're on Twitter at Fan Counters Live. You can also join our Facebook groups by searching on Facebook for Fan Counters. We're also at Sharpie Nation on Fan Counters. Sharpie Nation's the uh, private Facebook group named after signing things with a Sharpie. Yes. We've been asked. Um, so that's what's going on there. You can also email us. At hello at fancounters.com. And uh, Elizabeth... You have breaking news. I do have breaking news. My husband, Mark, has listened to the podcast. That is me falling over. So, Holy cow. Mark, yeah. welcome to the show. So here's how this goes. <laughs> we needed to run our son up to Minnesota for his week with grandma. And so we really don't have a reliable car we have one. And so we needed what, to big rent. big honk RV? Uh, no, no. Yeah, that is the reliable one. But we needed to rent a car for Mark to drive up because I needed the reliable car here in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And so this particular one had some sort of like satellite radio and it had a podcast button. Nice. And so he just for argument's sake pushed podcast and started listening to fan counters. What did he listen to? Um Justin's la- uh, two weeks ago. Oh, okay. And so uh, he listened to that and he really enjoyed it. Ooh. And so then he was kind of like, oh, like, where should I go next? Okay. So big mistake. He went to our Disney vacation. <laughs> and he's like, I How was on that trouble vacation. Did you get into? How come it sounds like we had an awful time? <laughs> He goes, we had a nice time, you know, in Disney. I go, I know, but the fans don't really want to hear it. We saw Mickey. We had some nice food. They don't want to hear any of that. We went on a ride. You want to hear what really sucked well at Disney. And Believe me, I'm going to San Francisco next month with seven-year-olds, and you're going to hear every story. So then, I think in the Disney one, we bash him. Because, no, yeah, no. There, yeah. There's a couple of them where I make comments like, "Well, he never listens, anyways." And he heard at least one of those shows because he's like, "Oh, now were you in the car? Nice. The time? I am not in the car. Thank goodness." But that would be uncomfortable. Here's what I find to be hilarious. Okay, we are on show 94. Yeah, today's 94. Okay, so he has had 94 weeks. Yep. Two years. <laughs> To listen to the podcast. Now, all of a sudden, he has notes. No. Oh, you oh, should be doing <laughs> And I said, Nick is in charge. I don't, I, no, don't stop talking to me. No, you've had two years to listen to the podcast and give us some suggestions. And no. Oh, I actually want to hear him, though, because I do appreciate his feedback on many topics. Yes, but I don't think after 90 What did he have to say? I think there were things like, um, you know, some of the comments that I had made, like, well, what happened to him next? Like, can you get them back on? Oh, okay. And can you do things like that? We couldn't even get them on the and, first time. Right. Are we supposed to get them back? <laughs> and then it was like show suggestions of like local celebrities no. here. And Nobody I'm wants just to like, hear that. Right. That's what I kept saying. I'm like, that is not the premise People of our show. People are even saying, um, you should get this person. They're known in like this area or whatever. It's like, no, because... Uh, I'm trying to get people that I've heard of. Right. Okay. And it, like we're today's a national guest. show. Right. Worldwide, yeah. remember? Yeah, that's right. We have, we have, right. We have in fans. China. That's right. So. so we, so we don't want necessarily to just do all the local celebrities here in Wisconsin. And so I, I mean, I kind of shut it down, and then he was mad at me. He's like, "Fine, I won't listen to any more of your podcasts." I'm like, mm. "Yeah, after those comments, please don't." No. Yeah, uh, I'm I don't like, want to be in any. Trouble. I don't know where to go with this, dude. I'm. Thank you for listening. After 94 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> My wife still doesn't listen, so I know I don't. I'm I don't still in the it. clear. Well, he he's now I think figured out how to use the podcast app and is able to do it. I was gonna say as soon as you get rid of that car, he well, no, it's lost. on it's on his phone now, the okay. podcast app, and he uh, uh, starting next week, the in July, a couple weeks, he um, he is actually in charge of the entire state of Wisconsin. That means he'll be driving up to Rhinelander and then all the way down to Racine. So. Mm-hmm. He will have time in the car to be listening to podcasts. We'll see. Very interesting. Hey, I wanted to tell you real quick because um, Amazon's a wonderful thing, right? But I thought I'm going to jump on. You know, we had Chris Hogan on the program from the Dave Ramsey show. Dave Ramsey brought something to my attention this week that I'm going to bring to your attention. And we're just going to get this out there as much as possible because Amazon's a wonderful thing in most cases. 
but they have teamed up with a credit card company who is uh, builds helps build people's credit. Okay. Listen to this deal. So Amazon is now offering a credit card through this company where you put up six hundred to a thousand dollars to give to the bank, and they in turn will give you a credit card with that exact limit on it. And then what they do is you charge the thing and you have to pay the bill, right? And they're gonna help boost your credit that way. At twenty eight percent interest. So you get to borrow your own money. From Amazon on this credit card, this credit builder program at 28%. How generous of Amazon. Yikes. I don't, I mean, wow. That's not good, guys. I mean, because I still have to pay it back. Oh, even yeah. Even though it's not being debited out of my $6,000? No, the $600? No, they're just holding that as collateral for a possibility of an unpaid loan. But this is so that they can report to the credit bureaus. Yep, they're paying their bills. But if you just make minimum payments... They're so generous that they're going to charge you 28% to borrow your own money. Oh, my gosh. Amazon should get rid of the program. I'm with Dave Ramsey on this. Yeah, and um, it doesn't sound very nice. No, it's not nice at all. So uh, that would be something. It's on episode 10,489 of the Dave Ramsey Show. If you want to go to their podcast to listen to him talk about it, he'll tell you all about it. Wow. And how unhappy he is. So I just thought I would blast Amazon, too, because that's just taking advantage that's of people. That's just bad form, people. Totally. All right, listen, we've got a big gig coming up. We do. In Wisconsin. Summerfest. Again, Mark's like, you should go to the local <laughs> But it's not just local stuff here, But people. listen, Summerfest, we've talked about. It's the world's largest music festival in the world. Yes. And we've got some great bands coming to it. So in the next week or two or more, maybe, we're going to be featuring some of those great acts that are coming to Summerfest. And this week, we've got Paul Dean from the band Loverboy on the program. So I'm very excited to have him on the show. Now, Loverboy formed in Calgary, Canada in 1979. Their music's played daily on classic rock radio stations around the world. They've released nine studio albums since the 1980s, and four of them have gone multi platinum. Everyone knows the song Working for the Weekend, but many of you may not remember the songs being featured on Saturday Night Live when Chris Farley and Patrick Swayze were auditioning for Chippendales. I totally remember Hilarious. that. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember Loverboy. They were very popular in my grade school and high school years. You, however, were not born. No, I had to do some research. But I, I knew, obviously knew that song. I've actually, when I listened to the, their greatest hits, I was like, oh, yeah, I know that one. Oh, yeah, I know that one. It's kind of one of those. Okay. So. Let's find out about some Loverboy. All right, let's do it. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world, this is Fan Counters. With Nick and Elizabeth on the Podfix Network. There was this mob of people, and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do, the cops are going to be at yours. If I'm having dinner with my wife, don't sit down at my table. Don't follow me into the bathroom. Can I take a picture? We're gonna, oh, my God. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> well, guess what? I have a big surprise for you. That's why we call it Fan Counters. <laughs> I don't think you're going to last on the air very long. Yeah. Paul, welcome to Fan Counters. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Hey, we're uh, we're going to be talking about what are we talking about today again? We are talking about an appearance that you have coming up at the world's largest music festival in the world, Summerfest. I know, I know, I know. I'm so excited. We played there. We played there once, at least once before. You know what happened the first time though? Do tell. We got uh, Mike got sick. Uh, we were supposed to play there, and he got like two days before we had to cancel. And that was a real heartbreaker for us. And it took a few years to, before we were asked back. And now we're back for sure because we've all we've done it since then. But it was it was pretty. We were really stressed over that. I think this is it's Summerfest, right? You know, but uh, uh, he was actually he was in the hospital for a couple of days. He was I don't know what happened. He was like really sick. But then I remember I remember going and picking him up, and we were driving along, and he's back to his old. Cracking jokes and everything. So, oh, I love you, man. I'm so happy you're alive. You know, so <laughs> that, that was good. <laughs> now, didn't that happen just a few weeks ago where he got sick and he pulled in another singer from the, like a tribute band and they came up and finished the set? That was that was over a year ago. Yeah. When, oh, it was, was a year Washington ago. Washington State. Yeah. And we were playing playing with Survivor, and it was the weirdest thing because he was we're standing down in the, on the in the wings below the stairs, ready to come up. And he's warming up, and he's going up and down the scales, and he's got all the range, and it's looking good, you know. And he 
Although he did say to me before we won, he says, you know, I might have a little bit of trouble today. You might have to sing a couple of tunes. I went, okay, I'm all, I'm good with that. And then he got on stage and he sang a couple of tunes and it was, it just, his voice just ratched, completely bottomed out. And fortunately, there was a, a guy that he sings in, a, I think, a foreigner tribute band, uh-huh. which is, I mean, if you can sing foreigner, you can sing Roman Boy, you know. And I guess he knew a couple of Loverboy, or a bunch of Loverboy tunes, and I, it was a weird thing. Mike said, anybody out there knows some Loverboy tunes? And everybody put their hands up. And, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody wants to get up and sing. And, uh, yeah, so the guy got up and he nailed it. He was really good. Wow. And then Mike's wife, Kathy, was there. She sang a couple of songs, and, and another friend of Mike's got up and sang, which maybe should, couldn't, wasn't the best thing that happened, but whatever. Was all it was really fun. A lot of people were kind of upset about it, you know. I want my money back, but what are you going to do? Right. Mike, like Mike said, he says, "What are you going to do? We're just going to stop the show, or can we at least give them the songs?" You yeah, know? exactly. So at least you did so something. We, we played the songs, and uh, you know, the most important part: the guitar playing and my fabulous background vocals were there. So, what else matters, really? <laughs> <you know? laughs> Thank, thank you for that. I was totally kidding there. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Listen, after 40 years and you're still going strong, you've described your relationship with the band as family. Can you talk about the camaraderie that you even still have now when you're touring? What's it like, you know, traveling from city to city with these guys even still? You know, a um, couple of guys have real, a lot of quirks, you know. I, I don't have any quirks. I'm like a solid citizen. Would they say that <laughs> about you? <laughs> we'll interview the rest of the band at Summerfest and find out if that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there could be second opinions on that. But, uh, um, you know, it's, it, it is a family, and with the family comes disagreements, and, but there's also boundaries. And, uh, and you got kind of got to realize that people, they're like 60, I'm I'm well over sixty, but um, you you realize that probably they're not going to change. So either you you love them or you hate them, you know. So I I just I choose the former. I said this is this is the guy. He he loses. I lose it. You know, everybody loses it, and uh, you just got to say, okay, is that worth breaking the band up over because he did something rude or he was rude to somebody or I don't agree with what the way he said that or. Or why would he do that and mm-hmm. not think about everybody else in the band? You know, that kind of, everything that goes on in a family, a brother, brotherly thing. And I always say, no, it's not that big a deal. I'm just going to let it be, let it go, you know. So what? The guy, that's how it is. It didn't really affect me that much personally. Uh, whatever. Um, we are all we all mess up. So and everybody messes up. Right. So that's that's how we that's how I look at it. Anyway, I just go whatever you know. As long as I get to, as long as I get to continue what I'm doing, who would who would mess up that situation in the right mind? I just don't understand how so many. Well, I mean, I, I I'm going to speak. Lover Boy's my 14th band, <laughs> and you know, a lot of a lot of times we, we you just you either give up, you go this is not happening, or there's just a just something that. Doesn't with chemistry the, chemically does not work with the other guys in the band. Yeah, Chem, that, when I say chemically, I, that, I don't. Yeah, need we don't. To yeah, we don't that, even, that, you know, yeah, we know what you mean. Any, <laughs> <laughs> any, any third party, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's so. It's either either you keep going and 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 digging what you're doing, and or you just say you call it a day, and we we. I can speak for myself. I think I can speak for everybody. We love the songs, and we love we love the musicianship in the band and the communication we have in the band. And we all have a ninety nine percent of the time we've all got a really good sense of humor, and we're just we can, you know. I know I can be really goofy, and I I can really piss some people off. We're just in my goof. I I'm like seventy three going on fifteen. You know. <laughs> How are you? It is how it is. I drive my kid. He's twenty two. I drive him crazy sometimes. He's dad. I'm not eight. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to entertain me. You know. Yeah, I just can't help it. That's just who I am. So, that's that's probably one of my quirks. It drives a few people. You know, God, there he goes again. But whatever. Well, um, well let's talk we, a little we, bit about that music, because I want to talk yeah, about sure. working for the weekend. 
So Working for the Weekend is a song that everyone who is over the age of 30 has heard at least one time or another. It's one of the many classic hits from Loverboy. And you can't really hear, there's a lot of Loverboy in some of the 80s music, I'm sorry, some of the 80s movies where the movies look kind of dated, but the music seems to be kind of timeless. Do you get a lot of people who come up to you and tell you that they know where they were when they first heard that song or they identify that song with something specific? No, to be honest, I, I don't think anybody's ever said that. But the, Mike has this thing that he says on stage, when we start, when it's over. He said, and it's it's so true because it's kind of a ballad and you can, it's kind of a love song. And and it's kind of like a it's built for a backseat romance, you know. Um, and so he says that, that very same thing. He says, it's, just imagine where you were, what you were doing, and if you got caught doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, but yeah, I, I don't. You know what? What I really dig is when people come up to me and say, "Thanks for the music." It's just a simple thing like that, because that's that's what I do. You know, that's, besides be, besides playing my guitar, which I live for, and I live for the my I mean the band is my life, and that guitar playing is my life. But but making people happy and and getting on that same wavelength with them when we play live. You know, it's like if I go to a concert, I go to see Jeff Beck or somebody like that. I'm, I'm like, hang on every note. I know what that feeling is, you know, as a, as a music fan. And, and to have people come to me and say that they're hanging on every note and thanks so much for all the music that we've given them over the years, especially lately because we're still doing it. And, you know, record sales are, forget about it. It's nothing like it was in the 80s. It's, it's streaming and it's, uh, you you throw something up on YouTube and it's all free, you know, and right. that's, that's awesome because people are into it. They're digging it still, you know, but they're especially digging the old stuff and they, they that's what they want to hear. They come and we, we play the, the songs that they grew up with, I suppose, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of kids, a lot of kids are there or they didn't grow up with it, but they're still, it reaches them on some level lyrically or just a positive vibe or the amazing guitar playing and background singing. I don't know what it is, but uh, <laughs> it's, it, it just seems to, it seems to keep going. I, it blows my mind, actually. Well, I am 50, and you were the playbook of my grade school and high school years. Nick is significantly yeah. younger than I am and doesn't have those same, doesn't have those same memories. He's, he's picked it up over the years in, you know, just hearing it on the radio on old, absolutely yeah mm-hmm. but doesn't have it as you know like i remember them in high school and, and grade school dances and things like that <laughs> yeah yeah well i'll be honest i i spent a lot of time on youtube looking up lover boy and the different music videos you guys created over the years and especially back in the 80s do you guys spend a lot of time reminiscing about those times and and specifically those music videos? I mean, they are like amazing throwback. Obviously, for now, it's a throwback to the '80s, but um, put together so well. You guys did some really interesting things when you put film clips into one of your videos uh, for "Turn Me Loose." Um, what was your favorite music video memory that you have? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a pregnant pause, uh, a perfect example of editing. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember what song. Oh, I know. It was speaking of Turn Me Loose. It was that very same video. Uh, and, um, oh, man, I, I have a mental picture of it, but I'm just trying to, I, I can't remember what it was that really grabbed me about that video. It was, for, for one thing, it was our first video. And we were, we, I don't know how we were able to swing it, but we've been working really hard, uh, not touring. We'd been touring a bit, but we'd, we'd recorded the, you know, the album and, and we we're out on the road and MTV had just come out. I was in, I remember being in Wichita, Kansas and flipping around the channels and here's this music channel, MTV, which I'd never heard of, mm-hmm. brand new. And they're playing video after video and I couldn't believe how amazing it was. And then about a month later, we're, uh, we we got a break, so we all went to uh, to uh, part of our art to Mexico just for a week. We had a week off, and I guess we must have got a super deal on it because we we're all totally broke at the time. But <laughs> somehow we were able to get down there. So we're down there for two days, and our management phones up and says that CBS has arranged with MTV. They want to shoot Turn Me Loose. They want to do a video, and they want to do it in New York. I think it was a Beacon Theater or someplace like that in New York. 
And so you got to be there day after tomorrow or tomorrow or whatever. It is. And I just remember how amazing that was. Just the, our very first video that we'd done, you know. I mean, we'd had, we'd done a lot of photo shoots and I've been, we've been involved in a lot of live broadcasts and, and done a lot of TV shows, you know, before and since with other bands and that. But to actually be associated with MTV, that was a, that was a huge thing for us. And then from there, we went, uh, I guess we sort of became the darlings of MTV. We were, we had a bunch of shows that we were get, guest disc or video jockeying on, and uh, a couple of contests. We did a contest uh, for Queen of the Broken Hearts, off our third album. Uh, the the winner gets to be in our video, which was really cool. And they had a, a they had a uh, a Christmas kind of thing where a couple of the guys from Loverboy are taking a couple of contest winners on the Concord from New York City over to Finland, and they're going to go be Santa Claus, and they're going to see his reindeer and everything. It made it okay. Um, Were you on that trip? Myself? No, I chose to go to Maui for some reason that that, that weekend. Uh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't really big big on going into the North Pole. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess they had a great time. I mean, I heard they had a really good time. But, but it's just the, the fact that MTV supported us like that it was incredible what the, the support we got and it's it's interesting now because all the video jocks are all working for serious xm and uh we're all we're still really tight with them and we've done a few shows with them as well uh we, we did the 80s cruise and we did a, a serious uh, broadcast and and so it's so it's great to be hanging out with with those with the with the bjs again after so many years. and it's funny how they all went from one like really close, like a, a little, I don't know, um, the MTV thing is really tight. It was just like a handful of personalities mm-hmm. over to XM when there's a handful of personalities that's on the 80s, 80s on 80s. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool that they stuck together. They're like a, their own little band, you know? <laughs> well, and that's rare these days yeah. to stay doing the yeah. same kind of thing. You'll be performing at the world's largest music festival, Summerfest, right here in Milwaukee on July 3rd. How have your live performances changed throughout the last 40 years? You know, a lot of people, they say, you guys sound exactly like you did in the 80s. And I go, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 40 years I mean, older, I, but thank you. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I think was, that's a yeah, compliment. Well, no, I was thinking, I was, I was hoping everyone said, you know, you guys sound better every time I hear you. <laughs> Some people do say that, and that's that's what I that kind of stokes my ego, I suppose. But I, it's hard to say because I live day by day, and if I have some nights, we have amazing nights when I walk off stage and say, what just happened? And, it, and an hour later, I'm still floating. You know, it's it's like. It's like I was mentioning earlier. If I go see Jeff Beck or some act that I love, mm-hmm. it'll stay with me for days. And and I'm sure it's, I would imagine, it's like that for any fan with a band that they really love. If they, if the band is, I mean, some nights we get in a bubble and it's like, you, you can do no wrong. There is not a bad note to be played and all the grooves are, are tight and, and exciting and Mike is funny and, and got these great appropriate things that he says and the audience is going crazy and you walk off stage and it's like wow and then you you know then the first 20 minutes is like it's trying to make that transition back to reality mm-hmm. it's, it's a tough thing sometimes i mean <laughs> first world problem guaranteed but uh <laughs> it's it's uh it, it's it's really so what's really changed i don't know um i think we're I mean, I listen back to some of the early tapes, and we were, you know, we were 40 years younger, and, we, and the tempos have slowed down a little bit. But so has, so has music tempos slowed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's still there's still punk, and there's still uh, there's still up tempo rock, you know. I'm, I mean, I I have a new album coming out that has quite a bit of that in it, still that up up tempo stuff. But uh, there's also some really down tempo, and that Lover Boy has. Like loving every minute of it, and when it's over, and take me to the top, or and probably this could be the night, which are the four slow songs that we play in the night, are and and lucky ones. They're definitely a bit slower than they were. They're they're a little heavier, a little more, a, a little bigger drumsticks, maybe a little thicker drumsticks, and I don't know what it is, but things are just they're back in the pocket. More. But I think music is like that today, especially in rap and and a lot of a lot of pop. You know, it, it's. Uh, like Taylor Swift stuff is all like really down tempo from where it was 
10 years ago. That's true. And, uh, sure. and it's just, a, it's a natural thing. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's age. I think it's, 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 it's a different heart. It's a different approach to it. You know, and it's just, it's just heavier that way. And, uh, that's so that it, in my mind that's changed. And I know, I know that for a fact because I listen, I compare them. Uh, if I have a, you know, I'll, I'll have it on my, on my, phone i'll have a, a meter checker a, a tempo checker and you can mm-hmm. see it's just okay we recorded this doing it at 152 rpm and now we're playing it at 147 there's a big difference there but it still it feels feels right for the times and for the band and it's just more slug to it you know now that uh, and we're and yeah i'm sorry go ahead you know i was just gonna say so when you're at Summerfest, are the concert goers expecting you to be playing all the old ones or do you also play some of the new music we found that people are always, well, I was going to say, they're looking for an excuse to go to the washroom because if they got to go, they got to go. But I can't go now. I got So they're looking for this. <laughs> they're looking for the new song. Oh, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't know this. I'm, let's, okay, let's get that hot dog right now. Okay. We, we're, we, don't, we don't give them a chance. Sorry, everybody. We, <laughs> we, play, we play the... The, the the hits you know the, the okay. videos so we play pretty much all of our videos and we had a couple of tunes that like we played take me to the top and and uh it's your life which were um not not, not radio hits or, or mtv hits but they they're really fun to play like take me to the top we get to stretch out there's a there's a sax instead of a guitar there's a sax solo and a lot of dynamics and uh and uh um, it's your life has some sly playing in it and just so but what i'm hoping that people are gonna i mean we've had people that have seen a hundred over a hundred of our shows and they keep coming back because they're really tuned into what we do as probably as tuned in as we are and they they say well that was different oh listen to that well, that's a cool thing then they're they can really hear the difference difference from night to night and that's a and that's where I live for, because um, you know the, the, my guitar parts are pretty basic and pretty straightforward. So it gives me a lot of room, a lot of nudge room that I can mess around with things. And everything feels a little bit different every night. And some nights, it, I don't know if this is getting a little out there, but they, it has a certain swing to it. Mm-hmm. And some nights, it's, some nights it's, it's got more of a military straight ahead, and some nights it's just sludge, and some nights it's really metal. And some nights it's really poppy and on top of the beat, and it's really different every night. From and I'm like I'm hyper tuned into into the you know the, the subtleties of the of the songs, and I know there's some fans out there that are too. There's a lot of fans that they go, oh, there's other bands, there's other guys in the band. I thought Mike Reno was the band, you know, and they, and, but and, but I'm sure there's a lot of fans that go, I love these guys, right. you know. It's not all about the the vocal; it's about the drum solo and, and the, the bass licks and the amazing keyboard uh, intros and just this, all the things that go into our set, you know. So. Now, Paul, I want to talk about the fans a little bit. And I want you to think back, uh, maybe even to your heyday when you were like really at the top of the charts and that kind of thing. Or even now, I want to talk about fan encounters because that's kind of what the theme of our show is. We ask every guest about their favorite, most memorable fan encounters that they've had whether it be fun or creepy or uh, a little weird, do any certain fan experiences stand out in your mind as ones you'll never forget? Yeah, we're playing in San Antonio, right at, like you say, right at the, at the height. And we, we came, we were all in the limo coming out of the, out of the, the venue mm-hmm. or the, the arena down there. I can't remember the name of the arena. And we were driving out and we were literally swarmed by fans all over the car. It was like we, we drove into an ant pile. I couldn't believe it. And, and you know, we kept the windows up and we kept going really slowly and we, we got out of there. But I couldn't, I couldn't believe how insane they were. You know, it was like, I'd never seen that before or since within this band. It was like Beatlemania. You know, oh. it was like, wow. And San Antonio has always been a real stronghold for Canadian rock with, with Triumph before us and, and, uh, probably Rush and so many Canadian bands that for some reason it just sent there's a San Antonio just just grabbed onto that Canadian thing but uh, so there was that and there was another just speaking of Beatlemania one time we were in uh, 
in Tokyo and we were doing, a, uh, I don't know, some kind of a, it wasn't really a video shoot. It was just a, 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 probably coming out of the hotel and go, go getting into the limo or something. And I just remember, and I can't remember how it was set up, but I remember running from the fans. They were chasing us just like, like the beating hard days night. It's like, well, this is, this is cool. It's very surreal. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, Interesting thing in, in Japan, they have a they have a different uh, a different mentality there. They they wait for you at the bottom of the elevator with gifts. So when you come out in the morning, they're they're there with gifts. Here's another another really interesting difference in in crowd encounters. Normally, when we play in Europe or or Canada or the U.S., we'll do it. We'll do a we'll do a song, and the the, the response will go. Yeah, 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 clap, clap, yeah, rah, rah, yeah, 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 and then that would kind of fade out, fade out, fade out, fade out, fade out, fade out, and then we would say something, right? Mm-hmm. So we're we're in Japan, and we we play the first tune, and we would bam, we hit the ending, and the car goes yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's it. That's that's it. <laughs> and so we're we're standing around there with our our pants down around our ankles and going hmm, awkward, and but anyway, that's just how it is, and. They told us before, and I says, "Okay, here's here's what you do. You do two encores, no matter what. Everybody does two encores of two songs. So plan your set accordingly. Make sure you got enough. You know, you're going to work out the tunes right that way. So we do the we we play the we end the first the first this well the actual set the proper the set probably would work the weekend or whatever. And the crowd, the same thing happens. It's like yeah 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 yeah, and then we walk off in silence." And then we kind of look at each other and we were like looking at her like, okay, what are we going to do? 30 seconds of, of nothing. And then we walk back on and they go, clap, clap, clap. And we're going, this is so lame. And the, security <laughs> is, the security is really severe and they're all standing there with their arms folded and nobody can get out of their seats. You can stand by your seat, but nobody comes up front. Nobody stands in the oh aisle. My gosh. There's, there's no standing on the seat to stand on people's shoulders or going crazy. It's like, you can watch the band, be very polite. And then we're, when it's over. So anyway, so we do the two encores. Same thing at the end of the second encore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this is a really long story, but. That's okay. So we're going, man, this is this is not what I expected Japan was going to be. Because, you, yeah. you, you know, you hear about all these bands coming to Japan. So we're, you know, we do our thing and we get changed and, and get on our street dads and we come down. the street. So we open the backstage door to come down to our, our uh, limo. And all the fans are standing outside going completely nuts. Absolutely berserk, cheering and, and laughing and waving in their hands and just being the happiest, most uh, insane crowd you've ever seen. So I went, thank God. <laughs> so they had them under complete stuck, control you know? inside. Well, I was going to say, it would probably not be polite or proper inside the, the venue to be, yeah, dis- like, to be disrespectful. Yeah, the, sorry, there, it's like, well, there's no security and they got to be... Just themselves people, people yeah. right they, they people who like the band, band. <laughs> yeah who, who who wanted to give us gifts and yeah. chase us down the street you know wow so that was that was a really interesting ex- experience that was in in 82 we were there for one week or 10 days i guess yeah and we went to all the major cities and did some bunch of tv shows and that was, that was a that was a real fun thing to do plus you see all the different the, the way the way all the cars would stop at the lights and uh, at the traffic lights and shut their cars off and turn their headlights off so that they wouldn't burn the people ahead of them. And all the taxi drivers wore white gloves and it was like, wow, is this ever cool? And then, you know, but at least we got that sense of reality after the the show was over. It just it was great the, the response. Uh, that's that's the. There's one other one that that I really remember too, and it wasn't really a direct response, but. We were playing in Munich around that same period in '83, I think, and uh, we're playing in a, in a velodrome, where which is a wooden, a bicycle racetrack. So it's all it's like a, a an indoor oval made of wood, okay. and the, the track track was made of wood, and uh, so we we're playing at, at in the at the end of that, or maybe in the middle of it. But I just remember the crowd chanting, and it's never happened before. Or since love for boy, love for boy, and like you know, there's like four thousand or five thousand, mostly guys, chanting in this guttural Very deep German yeah. accent, love for boy. Anyway, that was that was really cool too. That was it, it's things like that. It's, I know it sounds like 
what a what a what a ego this guy has. It's all about the adoration, but it's it, no. We want to know really about your about fans. It's about that. It's about the, it. It's how different cultures react. You know. Yes. So I, and and it's a funny thing. We did a couple of shows in in Quebec last year, uh, last summer, and. They have this soccer chant when they when they get really stoked, like when we finish "Turn Me Loose," go or something like a melody like that, and everybody's doing it. And I, apparently, they do it at hockey games, and I've, <laughs> and it only happens in Quebec, and okay. it was in that two little towns. Well, not I mean major cities, right? That were about a I don't know, hundred miles apart or something, you know. And we did these two shows, so there you go. Cool. So you've been touring for quite some time, and you obviously um, were a very popular band in the 80s. So we, we want to know, because we're about fans and whether or not you're a fan, were there any celebrities that you crossed paths with that made a, sort of a, an impact on you? We shared a road manager because we were, and, and we do, a, lot of, a lot of bands do this. They'll, they'll work with a certain crew, and then they'll, they'll take a break and they'll go do a recording. And that crew, as a as a whole, sometimes will go to another band and take care of them while while their main band is recording. Well, we had Bruce Springsteen's road manager because Bruce was recording at the time, and we we got pretty tight with the guy. He was a really cool guy, and I I was in in New Jersey when when Bruce had uh, ten nights at the at the I can't remember the that's really bad. I can't remember the name of the of the room that the, the big arena that he had and uh i was there for a um uh, a demarzio i think it was a, it was a yeah it was a demarzio uh thing because i was i was uh, um what do you call it an endorser of demarzio pickups at the time okay so i was out there and we were we were just having a party and a, and a, a video shoot and just generally it was probably a trade show or something and uh I remember that the, uh, the the guy, the road manager, called me up and says, "Do you want to come to the show tonight? We're in, we're playing just down the street." So I I grabbed the the, the, the head of Demarzio, and the two of us we went to the show. And afterwards, um, he, the, the road manager says, "Hey, you want to meet Bruce?" I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah. So he take he takes me into this dressing room, says, "Just me and, and and Bruce Springsteen in the room." It's like. Uh, 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 <laughs> an audition, uh, 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 a thing with the Pope. It was like, <laughs> it, that was pr- pretty, it's like, uh, hi. <laughs> he was really cool, really gracious guy. But that, I mean, that would, that, that just doesn't happen, you know? Yeah. That's like, it's it's on the same level as, hey, M- Paul McCartney wants you to come backstage and hang for a little bit, you know? Yeah. But, uh, which would be okay. Equally <laughs> as cool, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But we played with we we played with a lot of bands. Like we we played with uh, with Van Halen, and that was that was really cool. You no, know, we we were at a party at uh, at Scott Smith, the late great Scott Smith, our bass player, who uh, who, who went missing at sea twenty years ago. Um, we were at his house in in North Vancouver when we were all living in Vancouver, and uh, Scott was really good friends with Michael Anthony, I believe, and. So through Michael, we became pretty tight with Van Halen. I remember Eddie coming to the party, and I don't, I'm don't. i really bad. I don't remember the name of the song, but there's a song, I think, on OU812, where Eddie starts the tune, and, and you have this kind of... This and what that sound is, is, and I believe that, that Eddie might have discovered it at this party, but he had, he had a guitar. He's always playing his guitar. Um, he, even if it's just newly, he wasn't plugged into an app or anything. But I guess that night maybe he was. And he got hold of a of a blender, like a, a portable blender. It's like that kind that it's like a I don't know what you I don't know what else you like a mix master or whatever okay. it was. But it, it's kind of like a drill. But it was a it was a mixer, like a, ha- a handheld sure. mixer with a thing that goes around and you stick it in your smoothie, right? Yeah, yeah. And he so he we're sitting around just yakking and and. He uh, and he picks up this thing and he puts it next to his pickup and he cranks the thing in. That's the sound that you hear on that on oh, that record. Okay. So I, and and I also remember an, another time watching him. Uh, he was playing piano and I think it might have been the beginning of. Uh, oh, what was it? 
great was it jump i can't remember the great song that has a really cool piano intro to it anyway so that's kind of cool hanging with him and watching him do his, his thing you know mm-hmm. very neat well paul i want to thank you so much for joining us we're looking forward to seeing you at Summerfest on july 3rd yeah we're we're we're, we're definitely stoked for that it's it's a truly an honor to play there just because it's such an iconic festival and it's going to be great we're looking forward to seeing the fans and uh getting in the bubble with them you know yeah Excellent. And uh, the last thing I wanted to ask you before we let you go is you mentioned new music coming up. You have a new album coming out that's a solo project. Is is that right? That, that's right. That's right. I've released a couple of couple of singles and videos uh, on uh, on YouTube and uh, one of them called Be With You and the other one uh, called Hell Yeah. And uh, I'm about to release some the whole album coming up shortly. I can't say exactly when, but okay. it won't be too long. And it's, I'm really, I've been working on it for a long time and it's, it, I like it a lot. It's very, uh, um, eclectic. There's a lot of different styles on it. There's metal and pop and a couple of ballads. It's a funky, uh, uh, kind of down tempo, almost rap feel tunes. And, uh, really it's some up tempo rockers and, so a couple of metal tunes and all, all everything from my years of writing and uh, producing. Because uh, you know it depends on on your on my mood and I'll just yeah. say, you know I want to write a I want to write a uh, a metal tune or or it just happens I'm just sitting around and I'll I'll come up with a riff and I'll I'll record it on my phone and I'll uh, and I'll w- with a video of it so I know where I'm playing it on the guitar and that that's the beginning of a lot of tunes. So sometimes I'll just. Uh, I'll put the play a metronome and I'll just play along to it. The metronome it becomes the drums and all kinds of different ways to start a song. But uh, yeah, I got thirteen songs and um, I'm happy, pretty stoked about it. Can't wait to hear that music. Thanks, Paul Dean, for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Yes, thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you in well, a couple I'm weeks. To, yeah, we'll see you out there. All right. Our thanks to Paul Dean from Loverboy for joining us on this week's show. Lots of great stories. Yeah. I like hearing those classic 80s rock bands with the experiences that they had, which are so different than what even a band nowadays traveling overseas or wherever. I mean, this is a different world than it was 40 years ago. And to hear those memories kind of come back through the people who lived it pretty remarkable well i i was glad because we've said this conversation before but we didn't have cable growing up and so we obviously i didn't live in a bubble and i knew what mtv was but unless we went over to a friend's house we didn't ever get to see it but but i remember that that really was going to be the new end all be all that people were going to make these videos of their songs so that we would get to see it and he even alluded to it now that it's so changed that he's releasing this album on on um youtube and things like that that you know thousands of more people get to get their music out because of the genres that it's available now but i don't believe they get as paid as well as they could because that's a oh, lot right. of now, free now music. they're releasing music to promote tours which right. is if you're not performing live you're probably not, not going to make, make that money yeah but back in the 80s with mtv like you were mentioning that was your way to find out what these people even looked like right there wasn't an internet like google his picture right you had to either wait for them to come to your town so that it could be in the newspaper or you go by the record by the cd act, right yeah, because right? they'll be on the album cover. Um, that was really kind of the only way. Yeah. Well, and I do remember watching them going, wow, you know, I, I didn't think, you know, you hear their voices, but you don't know what they look like. And you're like, oh, I didn't realize that that's what you oh, look I've like. Oh, I've gotten comments that, through yeah. email about us. Oh, Once right. they finally once, found a picture of us. us that that's they, not what I thought. Right. You know, well, I get it a lot, too. That's can't not can't help you there. <laughs> this, is, this is what you get. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm excited for Summerfest. And uh, we have a couple of other people coming down the pike, correct? That oh, yeah. About um, yep. Summerfest. Next week, we should have another big musical artist joining us. I don't want to say... Because, uh, you know, things happen. But. Well, Summerfest goes 10 days. It is the world's largest music festival. So you don't have to live in Wisconsin to come. Get on a plane, get on a train, come and visit us. It is a party to be seen. That's right. For for uh, $22, you can see bands like Loverboy and Styx and Chicago and... Uh, even the big, bigger name artists from nowadays are playing there. So isn't it twenty stages go on at once? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I believe and it's, it's 20... amazing when you can't hear. 
Right. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't sell, carry over. Yeah, I don't know how they do conflict. that. Conflict. I think it's just how the little sections are built. But um, I, uh, being as you know, fifty, have spent a good portion of my teenage years at Summerfest and have wonderful memories of watching the Beach Boys every year and things like that bands year after year after year and you and I have been there with the radio station Mm -hmm. and gone to see some of our favorite country acts when we were doing that as a living and so we let's not forget to mention that Fan Counters is an official media sponsor of that is correct we will be there we will be there covering everything that goes on that's right so if you're just dying to meet us (laughs) (laughs) we'll be there somewhere send us an email and we'll track you down we'll meet up Uh, we'll 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 get a brat together that's right because it's beer and brat and boobs and butts that's what it is oh my god (laughs) and on that note we gotta get out of here (laughs) you can reach us at fan counters live on twitter you can email us at hello at fancounters.com and i really have got after she said that i gotta go we have to edit that section out (laughs) I won't, but have a great (laughs) week, everybody. Bye-bye. This was a podcast from the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com.